Hello. This is our last video in relation to investment appraisal, where we will complete our studies of how we build risk into decision making. We will be considering here sensitivity analysis and the use of certainty equivalents. Once we've calculated the net present value, sensitivity analysis turns to the estimates we made in the calculation and for any one estimate asks the question, how wrong could I be before the decision changes? In other words, how much different from that estimate will the number need to be before it turns out that I made a mistake in my initial conclusion? If the answer is it has to be very different, I'm probably feeling reasonably comfortable. If it only has to be slightly different before the decision changes, I'm very sensitive to that variable. For example, let's suppose we have calculated the NPV for a project to be positive $50,000. Within the calculation, there was an estimate for the initial investment of $1 million. Our initial conclusion would be to go ahead with the project, given it has a positive NPV. In fact, we'd be happy to go ahead with the project, provided the NPV is not zero or negative. For every $1 increase in the cost of the initial investment, the NPV will fall by $1. In other words, Initial investment could increase to $1,050,000 and the project would still be viable. At $1,050,000, that initial investment cost has increased by $50,000 and has therefore eliminated the positive NPV. The NPV would be zero. We would typically express the sensitivity with the following calculation. 50,000 divided by 1 million equals 5% sensitivity. A lower percentage sensitivity means that only a relatively small movement in the value of that variable will change the decision. In other words, a lower percentage means we are very sensitive to that variable. In more general terms, we can calculate the percentage sensitivity as follows. NPV of the project divided by NPV of the cash flows affected by the variable. Now, suppose we're interested in the sensitivity of our project's NPV to sales price. Revenues are, let's assume, $250,000 each year for five years. Corporation tax is at 30%. The cost of capital is 10%. As previously mentioned, the NPV of the project is estimated to be $50,000, and on that basis, we may well decide to go ahead as a preliminary conclusion. Let's now consider the sensitivity of our decision to sales price. The net present value of the cash flows affected by sales price is as follows. $250,000 before tax is worth $250,000 times 1 minus 30% equals $175,000 after tax each year for five years at a discount rate of 10%. The present value of after-tax revenue is therefore $175,000 times the five-year annuity factor at 10%, which equals $175,000 times 3.791 equals $663,425. If, for example, sales price halved, NPV would reduce by 0.5 times $663,425 equals $331,713. So we can afford to lose 50,000 divided by 663,425 equals 7.5% of sales revenue before we reduce our NPV down to zero. In other words, if sales price falls by 7.5%, we will eliminate NPV. We are therefore 7.5% sensitive to sales price. The same approach can be taken with the vast majority of cash flows that have gone into the NPV calculation. The decision maker can then focus in on the variables they are more sensitive to to make sure that their estimates are reasonable. There are a couple of exceptions to this though. Sensitivity to the cost of capital and sensitivity to the life of the project. Firstly, let's consider sensitivity to the cost of capital. With our project, the NPV at 10% is 
Do you remember what the internal rate of return tells us? It is that discount rate that yields an NPV equal to zero. Suppose for our project the IRR has been calculated at 14%. This means if our estimate for the cost of capital of 10% turns out to be wrong, it will change our decision if the cost of capital turns out to be 14% or higher because at that point the NPV equals zero. In other words, we would need to be 14 less 10 divided by 10 equals 40% wrong. We are 40% sensitive to our estimate for the cost of capital. Finally, with sensitivity analysis, let's consider sensitivity to the life of the project. Our five-year project has an NPV of $50,000 positive. Suppose we rerun the calculation as if the project was a four-year project and the NPV turns out to be approximately zero if it only lasts for four years. The percentage sensitivity to the life of the project will be calculated as follows. 5 less 4 divided by 5 equals 20%. Although sensitivity analysis can be a useful guide to decision makers to focus their attention on the key variables in a decision, it does have its drawbacks. It only looks at one variable changing at a time. In reality, they'll tend to change together. A simulation may be more appropriate with more than one variable changing. It doesn't come with a decision rule. Does a sensitivity of 6% mean we don't go ahead? That's down to the judgment of the decision maker. There are no rules to help make the decision. Even though sensitivity analysis tells us how wrong we would need to be in order for the decision to change, nowhere in our analysis does it include how likely we are to be wrong. For example, on the face of it, a 1% sensitivity to price might be worrying to the decision maker. However, if they have a signed contract in place guaranteeing what the price will be should they go ahead, there is in fact no need to be concerned. Finally, let's consider certainty equivalence. This is something we tend to do naturally. Consider the receipt of $1,000 we may be receiving in a month's time. If you're absolutely certain it will arrive, we may include it in our forecasts as $1,000. If you're reasonably certain, but not absolutely certain it will arrive, we might include it at, say, $900. If we think it could possibly arrive, but we're not at all certain, we might include it at, say, $250. In effect, what we're doing here is restating the possible $1,000 as a certainty equivalent. For example, we're saying a possible $1,000 is worth the same as a certain $900, for example. Let's consider how this might be examined. Consider the following estimated forecast cash flows for revenue in a project. T1, $100,000. T2, $200,000. And T3, $250,000. Relevant certainty equivalent factors are as follows. T1, 0.9, T2, 0.8, T3, 0.7. These certainty equivalent factors would need to be given to you in the question, or at least you would have to be given enough information to be able to work them out. Suppose the cost of capital is 14% and the risk-free rate of return is 10%. The risk-free rate is the rate of return required to compensate investors for interest and inflation only, i.e. no premium is included for risk. The present value using certainty equivalents will be calculated as follows. Start off by writing out the estimated cash flows. Multiply the estimated cash flows by the certainty equivalent factors. This strips out the risk from the cash flows and turns them into risk-free certainty equivalents. The certainty equivalents should then be discounted at the risk-free rate. There's no risk anymore in the cash flows, so we don't need a risk premium in the discount rate. There's nothing wrong with this calculation in principle. But in practice, the certainty equivalent factors cannot consistently be derived from anything objective. They will in effect be subjective, made-up numbers. 
which potentially undermines the accuracy of the overall answer. This brings us to an end of the investment appraisal part of the syllabus. Investment appraisal questions require a methodical approach. They're often quite numerically intensive, but with plenty of question practice and an orderly approach, they are eminently passable.